Hey folks, Good Guy Glenn here, and today is Sunday, February 11th, 2024, and it's Super Bowl Sunday. So this Super Bowl, we have KC going up against San Francisco. Generally, I would say, because I'm usually a four, uh, I usually don't like the 49ers, and um, but I will, when they're playing against someone else, root for them, because like, you know, whatever. But this time, I'm KC all the way, baby. People are asking me, are you gonna like watch the game today? And I was like, oh, I hope not. I hope that they get me a trailer and that I could be rolling. I'd much rather do that than watch the Super Bowl. But as it seems, I'm trapped in Ohio. Western Express has no trailers for me. And uh, I'm here. Let's talk a little bit about that. I picked up a load in South Carolina. What was that, Friday night? Friday evening. Picked up a load in South Carolina at a Walmart DC that I'd been to before. So that was easy peasy, baby. Just roll in there, know exactly where everything is, where to drop the empty, where to pick up the new trailer. Picked up, rolled out. Now, since I ran those vampire hours, Earlier that day, I ran out of hours real quick. And uh, I pulled into a pilot in South Carolina. It was really cool. It was really odd. Because I got in there later in the day, and there was plenty of spots. And it was Friday. So, I don't know what the deal is with that. I guess there's not a lot of guys that live around there. Or maybe it was such a rural place that, like, I don't know what the deal was. But I got a spot easy. And uh, I made bad choices. I went to Taco Bell. But whatever. Depends on how you look at it, your outcome. But it could be a good choice, it could be a bad choice, right? Anyway, the next day I decided to run this thing out. 500 miles up to Ohio, Grove City. I run it out. I get there. I drop. I'm excited. I'm happy. I've dropped early. I could get the heck out of Ohio early and not hit this snow that's coming on Monday. All right. I drive. Now, I stop to talk to the security guard. This is a problem. When, you're, when you decide to be running for mayor and friendly, that's when you lose out because the other kid who came in at the same time I did grabbed the last Western trailer and there was no other trailers in the yard. I called the company, I told them what was up. They said, okay, we'll find you a trailer. Then they proceed to send me another load. Here's the funny thing too. I had an hour and 46 minutes left on my clock and they send me a load that's an hour and 47 minutes away. <laughs> With no trailer. So, I actually entertained and said, if I boogie down there with no trailer, Bobtail, can I just pick this preloaded trailer up? And they're like, no, you have to leave it empty. All right. You know, it is what it is. And I've been sitting here waiting for an empty at this pilot in uh, London, Ohio. And the funny thing is, they say to me, because I've been calling, and they're like, dude, don't call. We will send you a message when we have a trailer for you. Okay. So I go into the pilot to use the bathroom. I come back out. I have a message. And it said, did you check back in for a trailer? So I call back. And I'm like, didn't you all just tell me to stop calling you? They're like, yeah, we're telling you to stop calling you. But whoever's covering for your DM is sending you messages saying to check in. And once again, what do they say? Ignore it. Ignore it. Like, so why am I getting messages if I'm constantly being told to ignore them? You know, you just can't make this stuff up. So, apparently, there's a trailer shortage in Ohio. Northern Ohio, Columbus area, whatever. I deliver here all the time. I drop empties here all the time. I know there's empties in this town. But anyway, the one good saving grace about it is I'm Bobtail, so I found a spot at the pilot on the weekend. I pulled into a shady, not really a spot for trucks spot, 
like in a corner, like tucked in, where you could just fit a bobtail, and that's where I'm at, in back by the tire shop. And I slept here last night, no problems, and it's all good. So, with that being said, I just wanted to address the fact that people say that in Florida, once you go into Florida, you don't come out. And I had quite some success in Florida last week. I picked up a bunch of loads in Florida. Mind you, I delivered Florida to Florida, but I still was running and I still made miles. And then I picked up a load at West Rock out of Florida in Chattanooga. So that was a decent load. And then I get up to Ohio, which is usually busy as heck, right? And I have no trailer. And this is the first time I've gotten trapped like this with no trailer. One time with my trainer. But we literally had a trailer back by the end of the day. I'm hoping that I get a trailer and I hope I get out of here. I need, you know, I need to get moving. And I've been spoiled by the 70 degree weather the last two weeks in the south. You know, it's 33 degrees up here in uh, Ohio right now. And there's snow coming. Organic Sumatra, in case you were wondering. So, that being said, been working on the videos, trying to get them out. Uh, I've been having Wi-Fi issues, man. I don't know if it's the tablet or the pilots, you know. This pilot, I didn't seem to have any problem. You know, and I'm not even close. I'm like in the backpack, you know. I'm not even close to the pilot. And I've been trying to get close and paying for reserve spots to get close to download better, and it hasn't been happening. So I thought there was something up with the tablet, but today the tablet had no problem uploading the video here. So well, that's that. I want to give a shout out to Ernest with Western Express. He uh, stopped me at the DC over in uh, Grove City, the Walmart DC, and he said, what's up? And he watches my videos and they were great when he was broke down last week in his truck. That stinks when you're doing breakdown, man. You know what I mean? And you're just stranded in some hotel waiting for your truck to be fixed. But it happens. It happens to all of us. I want to give a shout out to Tess. I met him at uh, the LG Distribution Center over in Georgia. And shout out to both those guys. Western Express drivers came up to me. They were like stoked to meet me. And that felt good. You know, I'm just like a regular dude, just like all y'all driving out here I'm just documenting this stuff and I'm just trying to like stay positive stay focused it's tough man it's not always easy you know but the way you gotta look at it honestly straight up you gotta look at it like it's an adventure you're out on an adventure if you look at it that way you're gonna be okay is the company gonna do messed up things to you yeah but they all do man they all do. Get the mindset out of your head that Western Express is trying to hurt you. They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to run a business. They hire cheap labor. The, this is every company in this country. If you've worked for Amazon, if you've worked for anyone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The turnover at Amazon is insane, whether you're warehouse or you're driving delivery. And why is that? Because they keep the turnover high. So they don't ever have to pay you raises. So they just you just run out your time and they get cheap labor. And that's what all companies do. So don't think that you're being, you know, marked out. You're not. This is a bigger problem than you working at Western Express. And uh, Western Express is doing you dirty. That's not the case. This is just the way that these corporations have figured out to work. And until that changes... I don't know what to tell you. It's just the way it's going to be. You know, until we get another Jimmy Hoffa who's going to organize everyone. But let me tell you, I was a I was in a union for years 
And that's not all that it's cracked up to be either. Because there's a lot of uh, backroom deals that get done and you get screwed and someone else gets an envelope. You know what I mean? So, for all y'all who complain and think you're counting down your days like you're in some sort of, like you're in Rikers Island, or for those of you not from the New York area, you're in some sort of uh, prison, just counting down your days till you get released and you get to go home. Know this. You're probably going to encounter this anywhere you go. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be worse. And I've said it before. Other companies will micromanage the heck out of you. They'll want to know what you're doing. When you stop at the truck stop, why did you stop at the truck stop? They're going to be on top of you. They're going to have the camera watching you. Western Express has got cameras now. But I'll be honest with you, and I want you to think about this real hard if you work for Western Express. Who do you, what do you think that is going to happen with those cameras? pretty much nothing. They're putting them in to say that they put them in. And they're there in case something really goes sideways. Do I like it? No, I've done a video on it. I hate it. I don't want to be watched. But if you're going to watch me, you're going to get a show. Just letting you know, for anyone out there who's putting cameras in their vehicles, you're going to get a show. I'm going to put one on for you. So, with that being said, you know, a lot of you, you're all talk about, you know, a lot of you, you talk about uh, going and getting that local job. Well, I know guys who are out there who came out, did OTR for a year or so, looking for the local job. And there's local jobs out there. I'm not going to say there's not. But those good local jobs, everyone wants those local jobs, including guys who've been in the business for years. So if you think you're going to stroll out of Western Express and walk into a six-figure local job, I want you to also think about this too. I talked to a couple of guys who haul fuel. The first guy I ever talked to who hauled fuel painted it just like a recruiter, like it's the greatest job on earth. Okay, I was stoked about that. Then I talked to about two or three guys since I've been out here OTR. And they say this, yeah, you're home every day, but... They're working 70 hours a week. They're making a lot of money, but they're never home. And you have to factor in your commute. And one guy said he commutes 45 minutes each way. So he goes home and sleeps for five hours, heads back, picks up his truck, and he's out delivering fuel again. That's worse than stopping and doing your 10 hour at a pilot. As far as downtime goes. So this idea that you're going to be home doing what? Doing what exactly? Paying rent for an apartment you're never going to be at because you're always at work in the truck delivering. And then it's tux freight. All these jobs are tux freight. And a lot of people, they talk nonsense about uh, dry van, and I get it. And honestly, I would do reefer. But I like Western Express because it's no tux freight. And I know you make a little bit more money, but I talked to a guy who did Dollar General, and he hated it. He made a lot of money for Dollar working Dollar General account, dedicated, but their parking lots are uneven, and he's got, you know, he's trying to put the, the pallet jack on, you know, the lift, and it's rolling off the lift because the pa plus because the parking lots uneven, and then in the snow and the ice, you're trying to haul a pallet jack. And a lot of these stores, you have to go through the front door, so you have a curb to contend with. And he's like, there's just a lot. It's not what it's cracked up to be. So if you could deal with that, that's cool. But it's just like not something at my age I want to deal with. I'll just do drive van, you know, OTR, and that's it. And if I go home, we'll see. You know what I mean? I can't put the cart before the horse. I just got to do what I got to do. It gets easier. Every week you're out here, it gets a little bit easier, I find. And the people who really, 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 I see people having problems out here. And I try to talk to them. And like a lot of people, they just don't want to hear it. And whenever you try to give someone some positive, they take it as negative for some reason. And that's because their mindset is full of negative. They just don't want to hear anything positive. So if you say... When you point out, well, is that a Western Express thing? Or is that just this job thing? 
they freak out and they say you're a company guy and all that. Bro, I'm, I'm, the last thing is I'm not a company guy. You know what I mean? I'm the guy who's going to try to be an organizer for a labor union. You know what I mean? I believe in the power for the people and we're out here working and we should have say and we should have rights and all that stuff. But I'm a realist. I'm 50 years old. I've been I was in a labor union for years. So you could be... It's not being negative when you try to just point out the truth. This is the way it is, and either you sign up for it or you don't. But it's not going to change for you. Not at all. It's just the way it is. All the receivers and shippers are going to treat you like garbage. Like you're like beat less than the help. They treat you like straight garbage. And if you're a shipper and receiver and watching this, why can't you just be kind? Do you know, like, we're out on the road make, delivering your goods. We're out here risking our lives with these idiot four-wheel drivers who just cut us off and do stupid things and, you know, running crazy hours to get your goods to where they need to go. And we show up, and we don't know because we've never been to your D.C., so when we're asking questions, you're like, <sighs> and you got like this fat attitude. Just stop with your fat attitude. So you're going to have the receivers treating you like crap. You're going to have the DMs pushing you. You're going to have the company pushing you. And it's just the way this business is. And you have to figure out how you run your clock and you can't sleep in till nine o'clock. I was here. I have no trailer, so I'm stuck here at the pilot. So I'm in the bathroom. It's like almost eight o'clock in the morning. And this kid is on the phone in the bathroom talking about how early it is and how he's gonna go to work and how he's so proud of himself because he's running early, eight o'clock in the morning. Bro, I'm out there zero three, shutting down at 1600. Like, you're late, man. Eight o'clock? You think that's early? That's me. That's how I run my clock. I want to be out early beforehand. I want to get the majority of my driving done before rush hour traffic. I want to get into town in the late morning, drop, pick up my next load, and then find a place to sleep, and then do the next, the same thing the next day. It's just the way it is. Man, it's, cap it's possible. You could do well. You just have to keep the mindset that you want to do well. Stop thinking the world is out to get you. Just do what you need to do. If you want to go home and get that local job, start looking on Indeed. Get a good resume. Present yourself well. Know what you're talking about. Do your pre-trip. They're going to ask you that, by the way. Ask some friends of yours who went to other companies. They're going to make you do a pre-trip. Almost like you're getting your CDL again. Companies do that. If you can't do the pre-trip, no bueno. Also, these mom and pops, they're gonna want you to know more about the truck because you're not gonna get the new equipment that you get out here at the Megas. You're spoiled out here. Ask a guy who's at a mom and pop. His truck is probably gonna be 10 years older than what you're driving now. 10 year old truck has 10 year old truck problems. So you're gonna have breakdowns and it's not like here, you're at a mom and pop. All you have is your dispatcher and he's gonna be asking you what's wrong with the truck and you better be able to tell him. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm not telling you you have to be a diesel mechanic, but these are things that are gonna come up. So, I hope that KC wins today at the Super Bowl. Comment below who you want to win. You're probably not going to see this video till after the Super Bowl anyway. But I'm just saying, comment below who you wanted to win. You know, and don't tell me who won because I'm going to know who won by the time this it gets released. Uh, but what I always tell you, stay positive. Do your pre-trip. Be safe out here. Rest. Get your rest. Keep, just, you know, believe in God, man. He's going to give you answers, and you might not think so, but he is. And you're not always going to get what you want, but you're going to get what you need.
and you're gonna wind up right where you need to be because that's the way it works. With that being said, God bless you. And if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so when I drop another video, you get a notification. Once again, this is Good Guy Glenn. Thanks for watching.